Star Trek Voyager. Why now is the perfect time for a Star Trek movie? Let's make this happen. How about new, you crazy Dutch bastard? I stumbled across this Cinema Blend article while trying to find out more info about the new Pike Star Trek show. I have no intention of actually watching the show. I genuinely have done everything in my power to avoid all Kurtzman Star Trek. Outside of watching a handful of reviews, I have not watched any of STD or <laughs> And outside of the trailer, I haven't seen any of the Lower Deck show. And I'm not going to. I am not watching those shows. I did my time. I suffered through all four seasons of Enterprise. Twice. Once when it aired, and again when I decided to watch all the series. That is as bad as I'm ever going to let it get. Nothing I've seen or heard about any of the Kurtzman shows has made me interested in anything other than building the warp drive so I can slingshot around the sun and undo this shit. And that's why I can only roll my eyes at this article saying that now's the time for a Voyager movie. Don't give them ideas, man. They already fucked up Seven of Nine, just ignored her character journey and wrote whatever the fuck they wanted. Like making her gay instead of shacked up with Chakotay like they were hidden at at the end of Voyager. Star Trek Voyager holds a special place in my heart because it was the first Trek show I got to watch from beginning to end as it aired. That could have been Deep Space Nine, but that kept getting interrupted by Cisco's favorite sport, baseball. The most boring game humans ever invented. I'd rather watch a quadriplegic soccer match played on a field of sedent cement than watch baseball. And the worst part was that this was well before digital cable. So I had no idea when the game would end and they finally showed DS9. So I'd have to keep checking to see if they'd show it after the game. And of course, it'd just be whatever was supposed to be on in that time slot. Until I turned back to the channel in the same hour where they were showing the end of the fucking episode. And if you're thinking, just watch the reruns. No, because they had a serious case of the fuck yous and wouldn't show it again. Do you know that these motherfuckers interrupted the episode where Jadzia died? They cut to a game at the beginning of the episode. I had to wait years to see the full episode on the sci-fi channel. So instead, the show I got to see all the way through was Voyager. And it was awesome. It's my favorite ship design. I like the cast. I love the theme song. I'd even raise the volume as the nacelles went up so that when it went to warp, it was really loud. The show isn't without its problems. It never made sense that Janeway and the crew never tried to create their own federation in the Delta Quadrant. The writers kept resetting the characters so that the characters didn't change that much from the beginning to the end of the series, or like with Harry and Chakotay, just forgot that they were even in the show. It's like the writers were afraid to take risks, and by the time they started to, they would still play the two steps forward, one step back game, so things never progressed as much as they could have. There were some great episodes though, especially in the fifth season, and I'm probably one of the few people who liked what they did with the Borg and expanding that lore. My biggest gripe with the show, however, is how it ended. They just wind up in front of Earth in the least dramatic way, and then that's it. They're at Earth, the show ends, no wrap-up, no scenes with families, just there's Earth, end of series. And that kind of puts the kibosh on any movie, because what else is there to tell? By the time the series ended, most of the major villains on the show had been dealt with or overused. Species 8472 was done, the Hirogen were done, the Kazon were done, the Borg were very done. Anything you do with the crew would be a regular Star Trek film, in which case you'd be better off using the TNG cast. You have nowhere to go, and that's the problem with this suggestion, which the article admits, quote, With the ship having returned to Earth, it's hard to imagine what the next step is. Then again, we already know that Janeway went on a search for Chakotay via Star Trek Prodigy, and that Seven of Nine is currently trying to help John Luke Picard fix time. People are out there spinning webs, so perhaps the first thing to do is to reach out to those people and get to work on how to make this happen. In other words, Star Trek Voyager, where are they now? That doesn't sound very interesting. I'm sure people could find some story to come up with to justify getting the crew back together. Maybe Chakotay's kid with Seska finally makes his way into the Alpha Quadrant, with the Kazon aligned with all the species Voyager fucked over like some kind of Delta Quadrant Me Too. But here's the thing. I don't trust the people currently running Star Trek to get that right. Just from what I've seen in the reviews, these people don't have a good grasp on what Star Trek is about. Red Letter Media made this observation that maybe the reason season 2 of 2 is set in 2024 instead of the future is because of the backlash. 
People hated the dystopic Federation from the first season, so the writers decided to take the show out of that world so they could show the hellhole they really wanted to show. Who thought taking this utopia everybody likes and making them the villain of the series was a good idea? Alex Kurtzman, that's who. That's who thought people wanted to see the Federation become a bunch of self-absorbed, selfish, xenophobic warmongers who shockingly aren't also capitalists. If you're going to take lukewarm on the nose pot shots at current US politics, why not throw it in? Just the laziest writing I've ever half witnessed. Nuance, gone. Metaphors, gone. Changing the real world events so it doesn't play out exactly the way you think it would, gone. When the Orville, a satire of Star Trek, is a better Trek show, you know you done fucked up. And you want me to hand over my precious Voyager to these people? Oh, hell no. Now, I know they're gonna do it. At some point, someone's gonna bring back Voyager in DS9, maybe not completely, but just a little. Like the article mentions, Janeway and Jakote will appear in Star Trek Prodigy, another animated show. I can imagine people running Star Trek to tap other actors to appear in different series as well. Part of me would love to see Seven and the Doctor on screen again, because Jerry Ryan and Robert Picardo were awesome together. I'd love to see all the TNG era cast interacting in a way we never got to see. To have a TNG, DS9, and Voyager crossover would be massive, but again, I don't trust these people to do it right. I don't care about the commenting on current politics because Trek has always done that. It's how tactlessly these people handle it that pisses me off. It's so obvious, so lazy, and the characters often act wildly different than they used to. Things like Guinan not knowing Picard in the past, or even detecting the change in the timeline, when the entire plot of yesterday's Enterprise was built around Guinan knowing something was off. Missed opportunities like when Seven tries to bribe the Bora Queen when they have her cornered, and she doesn't say comply. Angry Q, the complete lack of control for active Starfleet officers, and all the forced swearing. If you can't get basic things right, why should I trust you with the story? So no, we don't need a Voyager movie. I don't even particularly want a Voyager movie. What I want is for someone not Alex Kurtzman or J.J. Abrams to be in control of this franchise, preferably someone who appreciates real Trek or is at least capable of third grade level nuance. I'm not asking you to do something wild like give it to Robert Meyer Burnett or Razor Fist. No, no, that would be too good. I'm just asking for the bare minimum. Make it not suck. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.